firstly, as mentioned, we have Sir Paul Beresford. So Sir Paul, th these questions are all for you. So firstly, as a member of parliament and a dentist, you are well positioned for policy. Please explain the government's concerns regarding children's oral health. Fortunately, it's improved dramatically. Over the years when I ceased to become a minister and became backbench, I was able to promote dentistry, especially child dental health. We've had a number of debates in the House with people from the Labour Party and the Tory Party promoting the fact that children's health is lacking, that the figures are appalling. Uh, there are about 160 operations every single day in England for five to nine-year-olds in hospital for extractions, and that's costing about £836 per individual per time. Set aside the pain for the kids, the pain and difficulties for the parents, etc., etc. A lot of it is related mostly to poor education, and when I was working first in this country in East London, I was astonished at the appalling state of children's teeth, uh, related to some degree to dieting, also, or diet, sorry, not dieting, um, but also to the fact that many kids didn't have toothbrushes and they didn't have uh, toothpaste, obviously. This is changing and it's just as well because until recently and perhaps even now, most dentists have felt England was a, in England, that dentistry was a Cinderella service, but it's changing now. And Sarah Hurley, who's the recently appointed or relatively recently appointed chief dental officer, is on a huge campaign targeting children's dental health. And she's starting to succeed. She's got rather a good mantra, put the mouth back into the body, which I think is a very good way of putting it. And the response from ministers has been really quite helpful. She's had the support of many charities, MPs, health ministers, even dentists and dental practices to put in an increasing drive to teach toothbrushing in primary schools. And that's really starting to work. Uh, in addition to that, uh, Sarah Hurley, Prof Lennon of the British Fluidation Society and I have met with Matt Hancock on just this subject. And we are pushing heavily, not only for what Sarah is doing and everybody's doing with her, but to get fluoride into the water supply. Fluoride in the water supply in this country is pathetic. It's about 10% of the water supplies that will be available. Most countries like, and this covers one of your other questions, Australia, New Zealand, United States, Canada, they have 60, 70, 80% of their water supplies fluoridated. Fluoridation is, I hope, going to become one of the policies that's been pushed forward. I'll stop at that to get to your next question. Okay, Paul, thank you so much. Um, so yes, moving on, how does Britain compare to the rest of the world regarding children's oral health? About middling, I would say. The point on fluoride, I think, is really valid. Uh, those countries that have fluoridated water supply to a high proportion have better child dental health. But there are other aspects, and if I could let my accent slip out and go back to New Zealand, New Zealand has a system where they have dental therapists in clinics in all of the major primary schools and every child gets a checkup, every child gets uh, fillings when required, etc. Uh, we haven't got that here. The advantage in New Zealand is once fluoride came in, the numbers of children that need treatment has diminished so that the dental nurses, as they're called, therapists, have gone over to teaching oral hygiene and that is starting to make an increasing difference and I'm hoping we're going to get that here. Thank you, yes. Um, and how do you feel things have changed over the course of your career? The recognition of the importance of fluoride is slowly coming to the thinking members of the public and those that are concerned. There is still resistance. Uh, every time I mention fluoride in the House of Commons, I get a letter in shaky pur purple handwriting from Chile to tell me I've got it wrong. The handwriting's got shakier and shakier and it suddenly stopped. So I think the Great Reaper has done me a job. The um, hope now is that now we've got Sarah Hurley there and now we've got two ministers, that's Joe Churchill 
and Matt on board that once this little epidemic that seems to be devastating everybody comes to conclusion, if we can get it to conclusion, we can then go on with introducing fluoride, speeding up the uh, oral hygiene, and perhaps I'd quite like to use a biomin test so that we can have some schools using biomin, some not, and see exactly what happens if we can get the dental surgeries nearby to cooperate. Sarah's on for that. Well, that's yeah, interesting. It's certainly interesting to explore. Um, what is the current burden on the British economy regarding preventable oral health care, particularly in children? It's quite high uh, and it's depressing because it does not have to be high because caries is universally uh, preventable. Sarah and I would like to arrange for a, and aim for a target of 100% uh, removal of, but it's unrealistic. But when you recognise that 25% of all five-year-olds in England experience tooth decay in at least three to four percent, three to four teeth, and in deprived areas that, that goes up from 25 to 50%, that more than 45,000 people, young people, children, young people between zero and 19 years have gone into hospital for extractions, for tooth decay. This includes 26,000 five to nine year olds. You begin to see exactly the damage it's doing to the NHS budget and it's unnecessary damage that we could get over. Absolutely. Now, you, you've briefed on, you know, what you're currently working on um, with our Chief Dental Officer, Sarah Hurley, and what you've spoken to Matt Hancock about. But what is the current government strategy to ad address children's oral health moving forward? Uh, Sarah has going to have to work on the systems to encourage, and she's working on a different system of payment to try to encourage more dental surgeries to see children. I'm cutting this very short. We've got, in addition, the drive that Sarah and charities and MPs, MPs in the local area and the local councils are driving for to have toothbrushing. And as far as I can manage it, we will be looking towards toothbrushing and oral hygiene and so forth for very young kids. This has an added advantage that when you have very young children, the mothers or fathers, predominantly mothers turn up and you can actually ask them whether they've actually got a toothbrush. And from the halitosis at some of the meetings, I think some of them haven't. Uh, this will be, and I touched on this, an opportunity to test biomen against others and see how we go and get adoption of it. But it's going to be, in addition to that, the campaign is now behind dentistry. Matt accepts the importance of dentistry. Joe Churchill accepts the importance of dentistry. Sarah is campaigning. And if we can get fluoride progressively into the water supplies throughout the country, we could head for a very, very high preventative program. 